What's up, everyone? Welcome back to our podcast. This ain't the Fugees. This ain't the BGs. It's the three Gs. Three generations of entrepreneurship coming at you from my grandfather, my dad, and me. What's good in your hood, father? Yeah, everything's okay. Just the bad weather. <laughs> oh yeah, we got. I got caught up in the storm yesterday, and I was driving home. You had a gale of a time. We'll, we'll let that joke walk itself out of the room before we carry on. Yeah, we'll let it die Very outside. Windy. All right. So we were talking, we're having this conversation about automation, about um, less interaction with someone before you buy something. Now, I'm going to give my perspective on this, right? What I do as a coach, it's me as a person, right? A lot of coaches have websites, right? They'll direct people to their website. Hey, you know, if you want to know a bit more about me, here's my website, read it, have a look. If you like it, then book a call with me and we'll talk. Now, to me, that's reducing the amount of personal interaction you can have with someone. Why are we sending them away from us directly? That doesn't make any sense. Why are we doing that? Because as a coach, my website isn't going to answer any of your questions. It can tell you a lot of concepts, but there's no experience in that. It's kind of like if I went to Amazon and I wanted to buy a life coach package, what are they going to tell me? Here's a video, here's a description and compare the prices. That's where a lot of coaches go wrong. They're saying, oh, I've got, based on the market rate, yeah, but that's what I can charge. Fuck that. That's not a real thing. And that's what a lot of people are getting caught up in, some bullshit that's stopping them from doing the one thing that's going to help them make money is go and help people, right? A website is a great way to kill a potential client relationship. If you say, here's my website, have a look. Why? Instead of that, why don't we just talk? Hey, Jeffrey, oh, you want to know about how I coach? Cool. Tell me a bit about you. If, it's, if it sounds like I can help you, I'll block out some time for you. I'll give you an experience of how I coach. I don't want you to pay me. Then th- th- isn't that a better decider? Because now you've experienced it. Is this idiot good at what he does? Then Jeffrey might be thinking about me. Oh, you know, remember I told you someone said, you know, the way, you, how, how can I try? How, why am I going to listen to you? Look at the way you're dressed. Yeah, great question experience the coaching let that answer your questions but i think you still can't get away with people's perception you know there are people out there some some are brainwashed that if you haven't got a website you're no good person but again that's their perception you're going to get an element of that but in ours it's essential because they want to see what properties we're selling what services we're offering and what rates let's not make this about websites we're talking about no, but, impersonal interaction yeah, I, i'm trying to get on to that so Basically, you, in our service industry, we need both. So I always say, look, there's a website there, et cetera. But the most important thing is to invite three or four estate agents in, get the feel of what, who's going to give you the best service and that personal touch. Are they experienced? Are they qualified? Do you like them? Did you like their persona? You know, what is it that you want that they can service? And you put yourself in the client's shoes and say, what am I looking for? Transparency, honesty, speed. You know, I want, I want to do this quickly. I don't want to do it. I want to get the best one. It's up to you to fish out the people that you want. But you're going to get a variety of them. It's good to have a choice. Now, we got in our industry totally, you know, like by email, by interaction, you know, the purple bricks, etc. They're web-based, but they do interact. But the thing is you can't speak to them on the phone when you want to. So if you don't want that kind of, if you want that kind of, so you go to a local agent. But if you're okay with the emailing and voicemail, etc., then that's for you. But at least give them a chance. Give to bring two or three people in in different ways of approaching solving the same thing and see what you're happy with. You're the client, you're paying. So you should have the choice. As long as you have the choice. And if you're good enough, you'll make yourself available. Some you lose, some you win. You can't go crying on all oh, they took my business. You can't do that. You go into the next client, like you said, you make another call. This is what I, I see a lot of is like, um, if you're if you're going to do that, you know, like here's my website, I'm charging the market rate and whatever the fuck that is, um, then there's always an element of scarcity. There's there's like, a, I'm competing with other people and all that. You can't compete with someone who's playing a different game. Like if you're throwing a javelin and I'm hitting a tennis ball at a wall, I'm not competing with you. And that's why I think it trips a lot of people up. The reason I give such, um, I'll spend three to six hours with people. If, if I think, yeah, like, you know, we're, this could, they're getting help from this. I'm interested in working with them. I'll give them a full experience of how I work and I'll let that answer their questions. I'll let that 
answer their questions. Now, with, if I was going down the building a funnel route automation, it's like this, yeah, people will click a link in it, then it'll take them to a landing page, then it's a video, then you, after you watch the video, you scroll down a bit more, there's testimonials, there's all this random bullshit, which is, it's, it's like, you know, it just sounds good, in it? You know, like, we, you know, there's that stupid fucking saying in our community, it, it doesn't look good. That's what the website is. It's just there to look good. It's made, made, there to make wow. me look professional. Impersonating a professional type that we imagine people will want to hire. But imagine based on what? It's not based on experience. And that's why, you know when you say get three, four agents in, I would love to tell people, don't just take my word for it. Talk to other coaches. Go hire, go, go hire him for six sessions. Then you might want to come back. I don't know. But I think a comparison is good. But you're going back to what your granddad did. It, when people used to come in the restaurant, the sweet center, the first thing he used to do is say, oh, give them a, you know, something just been made. Oh, do you want a little sample? Mm. And I'm thinking, why is he giving things away? But little did I know he was building the business because he, why, why come into a shop, sweet shop? You're going to buy something, aren't you? Or you're looking at something. Why don't have a taste and then buy it? And then you got a better idea of what you want. Similar with you. You're giving a service. If you give a sample, a little interaction, you'll know what you're going to get rather than, I agree, the website is just generic. But a website's a good in the sense they're just giving information. They're not giving proper advice. They're not giving a proper feel of your business unless you get on the phone and interact. So that's why I think it's important to have the choice. I mean, Purple Bricks, um, thank God they're around because I do get a bit of their business as well because people are not satisfied. Mm. With with the with the zero interaction sometimes, but they're there. And this they're is, competitive. It's good to have a variety. This is why I love what happened recently. Right, a little while ago, um, let's say like over a year ago, I used to get pissed off with other coaches. Oh, like they're not doing the things the way I think they should be doing. Look at me getting all judgmental and shit for no reason. Like, well, who the fuck am I? How how do I know what the right answers are? I haven't even been doing this for a decade, and I'm coming out with all kinds of you know. Uh, big talk like that Judge. yeah exactly so anyway last year um no was it a year and a half or so ago um i had a conversation with someone and they had a they had or they had a business coach at the time right i said uh, let me ask you this chief what do you get in between calls with your business coach is there anything involved not really no we just have our calls and that's it so all right cool um do you want to work that way they said what do you mean i said well what if you get stuck with something on monday and you got a call with your coach on Friday. Well, what are you going to do? I'm not about building dependency on people. Like I can't take action unless my coach says it's okay. I don't, I don't like doing that. But what I'm getting at is there's a different level of service you can have. You know, like the, the entry level service is we spend the coaching time together. Once it hits four o'clock, get out of my office. You know, that kind of thing. Then there's this level of service. I'll, anything you need, I'm here. And, and you get to pick, like people don't, a lot of people don't want uh, this side or this side, they want something in between. And that's something I realized recently, especially um, over the last 12 to 18 months, the way I, what I offer has evolved because it just to fit the person in front of me. Okay, I only want an hour session every week. I don't need anything outside of that. Um, I want this many calls. This is what I want from you. I'm asking them, like, if the coaching is good, tell me what you want and I'll create something for you. Well, that's the way to grow your business. You've got to speak to your clients, the ones you've got, and also you've got to speak to the clients that got away. Because if you don't go down that avenue, you will not improve as a person, as a business. You will go down if you're not going to listen and learn from your clients or your prospective clients. Because my dad's always used to say, look after your existing clients, the rest will look after itself. So if you can pay that attention to people you already know, What's there stopping you from servicing them tomorrow, the day after the day after? Or they might recommend, you've got to work on them. If you please them, I'm sure the word will get out. And you're similar, it's word of mouth yours. You know, if somebody says you're good, they're going to tell a, a lot of other people. So you've got, to, you've got to work on that. But also, you've got to work on why the other one's got away. Then you've got to tailor it. This and you've is, got to be flexible. This is something that I've also seen with like a less personal way of working. Like, here's my website, have a look. You know, like... Um, you're you're not tailoring what you offer to what people want from you so i like i like to do that right someone says look i want i want to do a year but i can't afford it this is how much i've got cool i'll like we'll create something just for that 
If you go, if I tell you, hey, have a look at my website, these are the things I offer, you might be put off from asking me what off menu, what else can I have? But you can also put a proviso at the bottom to like flexible terms or this or but that. Then, but then what kind actually, of professionalism actually, are we actually, demonstrating when we do I that? actually don't put my terms on the website. I encourage them to talk to me. And also, I mean, one woman famously asked, she goes, why should I come to you? I said, because I can do a song and dance about your property and the website can't. She goes, what do you mean? I said, I can write poetry about your property. And she, she goes, all right then. So I wrote it and then she gave me the instruction. So what I'm saying, it's up to you to personally do something unique. And that was, you know, it just worked that time. But again, it's up to you to, to give that interaction, to produce a conversation and to grab the business because you've got an opportunity. With a website, I agree, you haven't. But some people just want to generically see what they're going in for. So for information, it's fine. But for actual business, you have to encourage them to phone you or you phone them. Don't be afraid to phone people, even if they've said no. At least ask why. And then that's another thing, like, you know, taking away the human interaction from this, a lot of people will say, oh, I just, I wish I just had clients coming to me. Well, I like to use this example, right? Let's say for whatever reason, everyone in the world knew how good I am at what I do. And they, and they, they could hire me at any point, they could get a hold of me, right? I would then have to become very selective about who I choose to talk to, right? Because if everyone in the world wants to hire me, how am I, well, my, I've only got so many hours in it, shit. Like, what do you want me to do? So that, that's something that I keep in mind. It's not a place to get to. I'm not trying to get to that point where everyone wants to hire me. It's a place I can come from internally. All right, cool. If everyone wanted to hire me, how selective would I be? Very. I would be very selective. I think if you, if you reach that point, like some of your... You're saying it's not, do. No, no, this is what I was saying. It's not about reaching the point. It's take it the other way. It's not a place to get to. It's a place to come from. It's not like once I get there, then I'll be selective. It's no, be selective now. And that's something that, and again, a website, if it's just a link and you can pay and all that, we're not being selective no, but, and it might lead but, to bad business. But sometime, you know, in business, you don't have much choice. Like when the market was down, especially in the, in the two recessions, we had to take what we could. Mm. So it depends on the market you're in and the time and the place. You can't just refuse business because you you got a fixed fee. You've got to be flexible. I agree. Especially with people in dire circumstances. In the, I remember in the early 90s and the uh, 2008 when the two recessions happened. People were in dire straits. And we had to be flexible. We had to come down our fees. We had to help people to get out of debt. It was interesting. You know, during COVID when it first started, um, I had like... I think I had about 25 new people jump on board with some, they signed up for some kind of coaching package, right? And um, I was busy. I was blocked for pretty much that whole year. You saw how hard I was working, right? Like I didn't really do much else. I was just growing the business. I was, sorry, I was just serving my existing clients. I didn't really grow the business more than that. I just worked with everyone I was working with and slowly, yeah, I had a few more clients here and there. Um, something that I noticed was as I was becoming more full, I was becoming way more selective. And it, I realized how beneficial that was for me because it wasn't like, okay, I, I have to do it because it, I'm trying to come from that place. It was, no, I'm there. I, I can't accept any more clients, really. I mean, yeah, take one or two, but that's it. And what I learned from that period of time was how to defend my time vigilantly, defending it from uh, wasting my time with, or like being too generous with my time with people who don't, aren't actually serious about making the changes they say they want to make. And that has really helped me today because I'm not in the position where I'm super full and I don't want any more clients. I'm about 15 to 20 every year. I've got space for a few more. That's cool. But I'm not in a rush to fill those spaces because that selectivity thing really taught me. Remember I told you one time I had some really difficult clients. I've told you a few of the stories and like, it was hard for me. I don't, I don't want to not, I don't not have challenging clients because it makes me a better coach. But there's, there's something in that. Like, why am I taking on this client? Is it because I want the money? Is it because I want to change them? Is it coming from an ego place? Or is it genuinely, it's a great fit. Yeah, let's continue. You know what I'm saying? But that's with the, any business. You, you evolve and you select. But it depends what cycle of the business you're in. If you're at the beginning, you can't select that much. You've got to go for it. Even if it's a failure, you will learn. But if you're in the middle of your, you know, let's say 10 years on, and you've got time to select you know, your clients, then so be it. But you can't, you're not that place originally at the beginning. So it depends on how much, you, 
you know, knowledge you got, how much um, money and time you spend in your business as well, because that's important to spend money on yourself to improve the business. You said self-development. That's important as well. You can't just assume it's going to grow. If you can identify in your own, like in your own persona or your own in capability, you can improve something, go and do it because it will help you in the business. And sometimes you said less is more. I totally agree with you now because as you go on, you don't need to go for fishing or hunting for every single instruction. You can make yourself, but then you select who you want to work with. But that's when you get to a level of business. You can't just click your fingers, I'm going to select from the beginning. And you can't do that. You can. It depends where you're coming from. Because I know one of my clients, they got savings to last them a couple of years. And they're just different. doing this full time. And different. yeah, exactly. That, so that's what I'm saying. Like People can set themselves Individual, up. Individual, yeah. And it's a mindset. It really is a mindset thing, man. You can decide to come from that place of I'm only going to work with people I love working with. And that's kind of more and more of what I was learning in the but, last couple of years. Hold on. How do you know? You, you just had a few conversations. How do you know you're going to love it? It's still the unknown a little bit, mm. but it's up to you, obviously, doing the thing. Well, you might decide, oh, hold on, this well, is not. Well, you, you know, like most of my clients, I work with them for a year. Yeah. Most people I'm working with is at, for a year, right? Some people, yeah, it's six months. Some people come into the retreat, that's six months. Like, it's different, but most people, it's a year, right? So I've spent a good like three, four sessions with them, a couple of months, well, maybe a month or two. They've seen uh, the amount of progress. We've both seen, is this working, isn't it? Then we're going back to the old thing, show, don't tell for mm. you. I mean, you are actually demonstrating, you know, what you're doing, your credentials. You're talking to people and you're giving a service. You're giving a sample. Well, we can't do that. We can't half sell the house mm. and say, do you like it? You can't do that. You just have to take and word of mouth testimonials talk to people like you're encouraging look talk to my existing clients see what and that that's another thing like again personal interaction right i can read a testimonial on a website i don't know who i don't know how it's been written i don't understand the energy that it's come with i'm saying for coaching yeah so i said to someone okay you've read some testimonials of this person you're thinking of hiring okay do yourself a favor before you pay the coach ask them can i talk to the people who wrote the testimonials is I'm not yeah. trying to like good. I'm not trying to cause a problem for anyone else. I'm saying to that person, you want help with this thing, talk to other people who've bought it, and if their if their testimonial matches what they're saying, great. And ask them, hey, look, you spent a year with Karen, whatever the fucking name is. Um, how was it? Oh, you know what? It was really good. But I spent twenty k. I didn't make any of it back. But, you know, my personal life's changed tremendously, so I wouldn't want, I, I didn't ask for a refund or I've, I've got different goals now. I don't want to grow the business. That's what someone might say. Someone else might say, right, I gave, I've spent 10. I got seven and a half back in the first year. Didn't pay them again, but the second year I made 20. You know, like, it's nuances of testimonial. It's really important that you get a real experience of what's going on behind the scenes as well as the website or as well as the coaching sessions you've had Um you're saying word of mouth, right? I want to create the word of mouth myself. I, I, as a business owner who hasn't been doing this for 20, 30 years and doesn't have that established background, people don't know about me in it. I want to create it for them. Hey, Jeffrey, you're asking me about you know coaching with you. Cool. Why don't you talk to this person? They hired me as a life coach. Why don't you talk to this person? They hired me to help them grow their business. Like, I want to give them a varied experience of that. And again, this is where the words slow down are very helpful because we can really slow things down to make sure we're building our business with longevity instead of I need the money now. I think what you're trying to uh, you know, give to your clients, first of all, it's nice that you're going into the client's shoes and saying, here I am, what do I expect? What do I want from a life coach, from a service industry? If you can think that way, then I think you're well on your way to servicing a client. Because if you can be the client yourself, you should know who's on the other side of who you're trying to service. If you can understand that, if you can connect to that, resonate with that, then I think you're really on your way to servicing clients or prospective clients. But if you go in, oh, I know everything, then you're gonna fail. This is what I love about my grandfather, man. Like he just, you said it so <laughs> simple, so simple. What do you want? Yeah. Oh, you want, you want five pound mix, cool. Uh, what, tell me what you want in here. Oh, you want gulab jamun, you want... But I recommend this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is what I'd recommend. You're saying you're having 20 people over. Why don't you add some samosa? 
You know, like, let's have beer this, let's have beer that. But it's up to you. I'm just suggesting maybe you like variety. I think it's the, it's the way you come across is very important. Because I remember I was, when I was only in my teens, I used to be quite cold and he didn't like it. He said, you're too automatic. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> he goes, oh, is this, is this my... Why can't you say with a bit of grace? And, you know, because he made the product, he knew where it was coming from. I didn't. I'm just selling it. But I learned by being educated, being in the back, seeing how he did it. And it was a lot of hard work and sweat gone into making a product. And if you're going to produce and sell it, you get a big satisfaction. Like my dad used to sit there. Oh, the jalebis are gone. I made them this morning. He was a big satisfaction. And the same thing when you're servicing client and you see they're doing well, they're happy, then you're happy. So, it, you know, it's a reciprocal with your client. If your client is doing well, you're going to be happy. I sold the property. They're going to be happy. I didn't sell it. They're going to be unhappy. Let's investigate. Let's see if we can improve it this time. Why did it go? Oh, it wasn't, you know, it was down valuation or the, the guy's, you know, chain broke down. At least we got something to explain. But if it was rudeness, oh, I didn't like the way he talked to me, then at least you can say, oh, one of the staff, I'm sorry, well, you call him out. Why did you do this? And don't be afraid to get yourself tested because this is what we do in the office. At the end of the sale, we go back to them and say, look, Thank you for the business. Very important because you're actually appreciating your client. And then saying to, oh, by the way, is there any way you think we could improve our service, our business? We would love to hear from you. We can take you know, criticism constructively. We don't want to argue with you, but if you can tell us, you know, that's the way to grow your business organically and properly. And also, you will learn, you'll thrive to learn. If people keep telling you, you'll keep going that notch up, notch up then you'll be happier as a salesperson, as a coach, because somebody's given you the armory to load yourself with all that information and give a better service. If you can come from that place and you yourself are transparent and conscientious of what you're doing, you're going to give a great service and people are going to like you for it because you're that personality who have grown that business, come through the ranks, learned everything, and now you're giving this special, unique from one a, man service. From a place of slowing down, the distinction here is don't hunt farm. Hunting, I've got to go out and get the business. Farming, I'm just planting seeds, bro. Oh, that's that plant has uh, I planted one there. Let's water it. Let's water. I'm nurturing plants. I'm fostering relationships. That's all I'm doing. All right. Anyway, next episode we'll we'll get into something different. Thank you for watching, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. We started this podcast to help you make the world a better place as a result of having a business. So send us your questions. We want to give back. We, my dad's coming to the end of his entrepreneurial career. I'm just getting started in mine. So this is good. I'm, you know, I, I had someone ask me, why did you start the podcast? I'm just mining your head for as much useful thing, like uh, knowledge as I can get for my own business. And um, yeah, if other people can benefit from that, that's great. But call that's, me a mine. That's where it really, that's why I started. I wanted to ask you questions. Mine about your own business. I wanted to ask you questions about my granddad that could help me grow my business and help me be a better coach because I think he was one of the best, but I didn't really get to experience it. Uh, anyway, we'll get way on to that later. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Peace.